There is a stretch of highway southeast of Houston where the bodies of more than two dozen women have been found. Their killer, though, has never been caught. The case has inspired a new movie, and tomorrow night, 48 Hours Mystery looks at the ongoing investigation. As correspondent Erin Moriarty tells us, nothing in the film can match the terror and the tragedy of the actual cases. Gritty industrial Texas City, Texas is a long way from Hollywood. But two veteran detectives here, Brian Getchus and Michael Land, were the inspiration for the lead characters in the newly released movie, Texas Killing Fields. Actor Jeffrey Dean Morgan plays Brian. The body was found right over there. A cop with a rather unusual style. Your character in the film prays over bodies. Do you do that in real life? I do. Michael Land, a more traditional tough guy, is played by Avatar star Sam Worthington. If she is in the fields, she's as good as gone. They are just two of the countless investigators over the years trying to solve the murders of more than 30 young women whose bodies were found in places like this desolate abandoned oil field. The particular area where your daughter was found has kind of gained a name over the years, hasn't it? Yeah. Now they call it the killing fields. The movie got its name from where Tim Miller's 16-year-old daughter, Laura, was found in 1986. She had disappeared a year and a half earlier. The killer was never found, and the murders continued up and down the highway between Houston and Galveston. Brian Getchus joined the investigation in 1996, when 13-year-old Crystal Baker was kidnapped from a convenience store in Texas City. Her body identified in another county two weeks later. What made the Crystal Baker case so difficult to solve? We had a two-week window that we lost. I mean, people can't remember who they saw at a convenience store two weeks ago, walking down a road hitchhiking. It, it just wasn't there. A year later, it was 12-year-old Laura Smither, murdered after she went out for a morning jog. And four months later, 17-year-old Jessica Kane simply vanished. Investigators like Getchus and Land found themselves up against human predators who were using Texas killing fields to get away with murder. There's somebody amongst us or something, some monster there that we don't know about. And, and how do we stop them? Well, this new movie is fiction, which is why we decided to take a look at the real cases mm -hmm. with the hope that maybe somebody will come forward with evidence and help solve some of these cases. Most of them are unsolved. And, and, and do we know for sure, too, the, these more the bodies of you know, these more than 30 women, are they all thought to be connected, the work of the same person, or that's not clear either? No. And initially, they thought it was one serial killer. Maybe the hope was it was one yeah. person, but it's been... 40 years, um, numerous victims, so now they think there's probably more than one serial killer. When you talk about that amount of time, though, is it, is it realistic to think the killer might still be caught? Yes, absolutely. In fact, on um, our hour tomorrow night, we actually highlight one case where they just got a guy 15 years later because of DNA. So it is realistic. Which is amazing. I mean, it really does give you a little bit of hope. Is there any thinking that, I know the movie is, is, is fiction, as you said, but is, is there any hoping that the movie, too, could maybe spur something, some sort of memory for someone. Well, I think so. I think it, it highlights and puts attention on this story, but that's one of the reasons why we looked at the real cases. We're yeah. dealing with the real cases. We have two young women who've never been identified, and we're going to show their, um, you know, their sketches, and maybe they'll at least be identified because of our hour. And hopefully that would bring some comfort to families, perhaps, who are trying to find someone who went missing. Aaron Moriarty, fascinating stuff, scary stuff. Scary.